Hi, I'm Daniel Zangle with PRP Labs here with Don Lipscomb, and we are doing the last in our series of videos about the different PRP kits on the market. Uh, we're looking at some third-party studies that have been done, and Don has some other research he's going to be talking about. And in this video, we are comparing the Harvest PRP kits with the M-Site PRP kits. And as a fair disclaimer, I would like to say that as of right now, filming this video, PRP Labs is currently an authorized US distributor for M-Site. Uh, we do choose to use their products because we believe they're the most effective. Um, so with that being said, we're gonna try to take a very objective look objective at these two look. kits. That's and, my job. And that's, yeah. that's why Don is here to serve as the impartial scientist. Um, so yeah, so just to, to first of all, if we could look at the basics from this study, it's done by Biosciences Research Associates comparing uh, platelet recovery rates and hematocrit levels in, in these two different kits. And we'll see there's some pretty big differences. Um, you know, there are, uh, there's a better platelet recovery rate in the M-Site kit. We're, we're seeing 81% platelet recovery versus 62%. And that also affects the overall concentration of the mm -hmm. PRP. Um, now, one thing that I noticed is the, the pH is almost the same. Mm -hmm. uh, it's slightly more in the harvest kit. And uh, Don, I believe you, you might be able to enlighten us a bit on how pH could affect things with PRP. Sure. Um, so I'm actually also going to pull in some supplemental research okay. just, to, just to make this a little bit more of a thorough um, investigation. Uh -huh. so, um, so lowering the pH of the final solution will actually make platelets, um, they're more likely to activate, to undergo degranulation and okay. release their growth factors. So one, one of the studies I want to discuss actually um, examined uh, cell proliferation of human osteoblasts. This was in vitro, so mm -hmm. in petri dishes. When they're ex when exposed to platelets that had been incubated in buffers at different pH. Okay. So the, the pH was 4.4, um, 5.4, 7.4, and 7.6. Okay. So overall, when the platelets were incubated at a pH of 5.4, they released more growth factors and stimulated more osteoblast growth. Okay. So uh, platelets basically like a lower pH for mm. activation. Now, mind you, you don't want the platelets to be activated yet. Right. In um, uh, whenever they're in the final PRP solution, you right. still want them not to be. However, like whenever they're being centrifuged. <clears throat> yeah. However, a difference between 6.9 and 7 doesn't really make much right, of a difference. Right, yeah, so, so pH matters in the mm -hmm. sense that it can affect how uh, quickly the platelets are degranulating exactly. and expressing their growth factors, but a 0.1 pH difference is no. not gonna necessarily make any kind of difference. No, um, and so like, so for instance, if you added an activator to it, like a high concentration of calcium chloride, mm -hmm. this could this does cause the pH actually to drop. Right. Yeah, and then uh, this causes uh, this quick degranulation. Right. I think they start, the growth factors start um, being expressed after 10 minutes right. at 10% calcium chloride. Yep, and that's what's commonly mm -hmm. used to activate PRP. And we'll, we'll see that when a, a physician or doctor is trying to create uh, platelet-rich fibrin, they'll sometimes call it, which mm -hmm. is activated PRP. And uh, that's when they'll put something like a 10% solution of sodium citrate. Uh, I believe usually they'll do it 5 or 10% per volume. Yeah, that and, sounds about right. Yeah, and then that will cause the, the uh, platelets to express their growth factors, mm -hmm. forming this fibrin clot, which is useful in surgical applications. Mm -hmm. um, but that's interesting to know that one of the mechanisms, or perhaps the main mechanism of action, could potentially be the pH change. Well, it's the pH change and uh, the presence of the calcium. Oh, okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, so you know, you have calcium ions being dissociated from calcium chloride then okay. because of the pH. Change. Okay. So, um, and this, this actually, the only detrimental effect, I guess, of adding a bunch of calcium chloride if you're gonna inject it mm -hmm. into the body, like especially around the surface yeah. area of the skin, is that it might cause a little bit of stinging and burning Got it. because you you would be injecting something fairly yeah. acidic. And I've heard of some providers using buffers for that reason when and they add that makes calcium a lot chloride. of sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So overall, the pH between these two kits is probably not going to cause any. No, sort of I don't think that's going to make any physiological difference. difference. Yeah. yeah. All right, Don. Well, thank you once again for uh, talking about PRP kits with me, and uh, we'll have some more videos coming up soon enough. So thanks for checking in.